Hi guys, welcome back to Planet Moonshine, the channel where we use home distilling techniques in a microbrewery. And uh, today, today this video is about making bourbon. Whew, yeah, nothing unusual about that for a distiller to be making bourbon. But this is going to be the lazy man's bourbon. What do I mean by that? If you want to find out, stick around. Yeah, the lazy man's bourbon. We're going to make an all grain bourbon, but with no mash. I'm really excited about this video because, ah, guys, if you've ever tried to make a high corn bourbon, You'll know what I'm talking about. Well, we're going to do none of that. And yet, I think we're still going to make ourselves an absolutely cracking bourbon. So, traditionally, if you're using corn, you have to gelatinize that corn. And the way to do that is to boil it, um, which makes a, a huge sticky mess. Um, after that, you let it cool, then you add the enzymes that you need uh, at the temperature that they work the best uh, to try to convert those gelatinized starches uh, into sugars. Then uh, you mash it like you would mash anything else. Uh, if you're putting in other grains, they go in and get mashed too. Um, then you extract the liquid from that sticky gooey mess, which is hard. So if we're not doing that, what are we doing? We're using this. This is Angel Yellow Label Leaven. This contains three different enzymes, uh, a mold called Rhizopus origi, and a whole bunch of yeast nutrients. It's a very clever little pack. Now, if you try to substitute any other type of yeast, it will not work. Even another angel yeast will not work. If you want to use this technique, you must have this yeast. I don't get paid by angel to make this video. Really, I'm just following in the footsteps of some guys on the Home Distillers channel who've done a lot of work on um, making bourbons and other things with this specific yeast and finding out what works best. So um, no prizes for originality from me, but hey, I'm really keen to give it a go. Yeah, so look for the little yellow stamp just here on the label. <laughs> There's not really much that separates this from the others apart from that. And it says the words, starter of liquor making. Hmm. Okay, so this yeast is available quite cheaply on AliExpress. It comes from China and like everything that comes from China, <laughs> at least here in Spain, takes an awfully long time to arrive. So I've been waiting a month and a half, nearly two months for this puppy to come, uh, which is why I'm so excited that it's here, finally. Um, so why is it special? It's those enzymes and mold in here that allow for a parallel fermentation process. The enzymes and the rhizopus mold convert the starches into sugars and alongside that the yeasts come along and convert the sugars to alcohol. But the real beauty of this is that you can do it cold. I say cold. Hmm. It likes to work at about 32 degrees, but anywhere in the range 28 to 34 will be fine. But it does like to be warm. Um, so how are we going to achieve that? Uh, well, it's May time here in, in Spain. The weather is getting warmer, but I'm going to insulate the tub and I'll probably stick a heating pad inside as well 
um, just to make sure we don't slip below that 30 degrees. All right, so the recipe. Uh, we are gonna use eight kilos of crushed animal feed corn. Uh, in America, they may call this kibbled corn, um, but here it's just crushed. Uh, you can get milled corn, which probably works fine. Uh, it might even be better, but crushed works too. Um, so eight kilos of crushed corn, one kilo of malted barley. I'm gonna use a mixture of German Rauchmalt, smoked malt, mm -hmm. and 500 grams of chocolate malt to get my one kilo of malted barley. And I'm gonna put in one kilo of rye, which we're gonna put through my little home, uh, home brewer's hand mill. Um, so, uh, this is a absolutely classic mix for a bourbon. 80% corn, 10% uh, rye, and 10% barley, malted barley. So, um, I think the recipe is gonna be quite good. I think the addition of a little bit of smoked malt is gonna give me a nice peaty, smoky flavor uh, uh, in the final product, which is gonna be fun. And uh, yeah, so what are we gonna do? Like I said, this yeast likes to work around 32 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mill the malted barley and the rye. Um, I have heard that if you mill the corn, it can work better, but this is the lazy man's bourbon, so we're not even doing that. We're literally just chucking all that into my 65 liter fermentation bucket, and then the lazy option is to get it to temperature is just to use tap water. Yeah, hot water at the tap. Um, the temperature is relatively unimportant. I say relatively. Um, you don't really want it to get super hot. It could end up killing the yeast, but just fill it with tap water um, and then allow it to cool uh, so that you're around that 34, 32 degrees temperature level before you pitch in your yeast. Now, you have to use a fair amount of this yeast, much more than you would use uh, if it was any other type of yeast, because you know, like I said before, not just yeast, yeast, enzymes, yeast nutrient, and mold, all in the same packet. So you need to use more of this than you normally would. Okay, now, I'll get to the amount of yeast we need to use in just a minute. Um, but I will say, say this, I have read that uh, people who underpitch this yeast, I don't know because they're mean or they just don't know how it works, but they end up with some pretty rancid smells coming from their fermentation vessel. People talk about it smelling like poo or vomit, which is not very good. Um, if that happens, don't panic, don't throw it, add more yeast, give it a good stir. That's the other thing about this. Uh, when you read the instructions that uh, come from the website in China, um, it will tell you that for the first three days of fermentation, you have to stir it at least every 12 hours. And again, people who don't do that complain of these foul smells coming from it. But if it happens, like I said, don't sweat, add more yeast, stir it up, wait for the stink to go away, it will do once all of the conversion is complete. So some uh, little extra things you do have to do, but still strikes me as being a hell of a lot less effort than messing around with a mash. Another suggestion using this yeast is to um, keep the pH below five. Now, if you don't have a pH meter, don't worry. Uh, half a teaspoon of lactic acid will do it. Most of the people who've done this recipe didn't even bother with that. But again, if you're getting that stink, maybe that could be the cause. All right, moving on. 
Okay, so recipe calls for eight kilos of this stuff, uh, which goes by the name in Spain, maiz patita. But to everyone else, it's cracked or kibbled corn. So let's see, let's see how we get on. Ooh, let's try this end. Well, some they do and some they don't. And some you just can't tell. And some they will and some they won't. And some it's just as well. Well, sort of. Ah, finally, finally, finally. It will in the end. Yeah. So this is what we're talking about. Not whole kernels, but then sort of almost all broken to some extent. Um, just one thing to bear in mind, this is animal grade corn because it's really cheap and easily easily gotten here in Spain at least. Um, you can use it, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, animal grade and human grade is more or less the same, there's only a hair's breadth between them. Um, and besides, after it's been mashed, you're going to boil the living shit out of it in a, in a, in a still, so it doesn't matter. Right, eight kilos. And this is the Rauch malt. Mm, wish this was smelly vision. <laughs> it smells great. This is amber malt. That's pre-crushed, so I don't need to do anything to that except chuck it in. And this is rye. The type of rye that I bought was flaked. So again, don't need to mill this. Just tip it in. Okay, so lazy man, here we go. The temperature of this water Ah, by hand, I would say, uh, I don't know, 45. And I'm going to tip in 55 or 60 litres. We'll see how full it is when that's been added. Um, so I'll just chuck one jug full in while we're waiting and uh, I'll do the rest off camera and show you the result. partial jug. Even lazier. What can I say? That's the whole point of this recipe, buddy. Lazy man's bourbon. Ooh, might need to go to the loo. So here it is, uh, about as filled up as I'm going to have it. Uh, temperature is uh, 33.6, which is just perfect for pitching. Uh, so I'm going to put it in situ, insulate it, and then uh, we'll come to the angel lemon leaven. Angel lemon leaven? 
Angel Yellow Leaven. Try saying that when you're drunk. Okay guys, so uh, this is my yeast. I've measured out 250 grams, which is total overkill for this. Ah, but you know, it was half a packet, so that was nice and easy. And we're just gonna sprinkle it in, just like that. And then we'll give it a good stir. Okay, so there we are. So there we are, insulated. Uh, just a little bit of insulating bubble wrap, which I have around the place, but you could use regular bubble wrap without any trouble at all. And quite simply, just taped in place with some packing tape. Uh, so, that's it. I've got to remember to stir this every uh, 12 hours for the first three days and uh, I'll keep you all informed. Uh, that lid is gonna stay in place just to keep bugs out, but it's on quite loose, so uh, any gas can escape. I don't expect there to be a high Krausen. Um, the last time I used a parallel fermentation, uh, it took a lot longer, 10 days, well, it took 30 days in fact, but uh, this one is supposed to take about 10 days and uh, I've got it on uh, some cardboard and underneath, between the cardboard and uh, the barrel is uh, a heat and mat. I'm just about to plug that on and set the temperature for 32 degrees. All right, catch you in a bit. <sighs> Not much to do now, but wait. Okay, so uh, this is the first stir after 12 hours. Uh, when I stirred it, there was a huge release of carbon dioxide, so I know that uh, lots of bubbles came up and uh, I know that this is off to a fine start. My temperature controller says we've held steady at 32 and a half degrees, which is brilliant. Uh, last night the temperature in here was, uh, I don't know, probably about 20, so we're doing okay. Okay guys, so uh, I've decided to split this uh, Lazy Man's Bourbon video into two and uh, I'll be posting the first half later tonight and hopefully uh, in a couple of weeks, two or three weeks time, I'll release the part two which shows the, uh, the rest of the fermentation and uh, the distillation. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're uh, really keen to see what happens next and you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, you'll get notified. Um, what else are we working on? Because I've got another project on the go. Next up is gonna be an absinthe video suggested by one of my subscribers. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, because <laughs> absinthe is a mysterious and demonized spirit. Uh, people say hallucinations uh, and all kinds of crazy things come from uh, drinking absinthe. So we're going to dig into that. So uh, stick around, keep watching and uh, catch you on the next one.